Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. We know a couple of folks will be joining us. Um, but let's talk about seven ways to play in powerful moments for those that you coach. I've seen some of your names before. It is nice to meet you. I'm Courtney Flanders. I'm joining you from Dallas, Texas. It has been very hot this summer, um, but other than that, I am doing well. How are you doing today, Phoebe? Hi, I'm Phoebe. I um, live in New Orleans, but I'm also in Texas. This week I'm in Austin, also uh, hiding out in this cold hotel room because it is very hot outside, but excited to be um, with all of you today. So at Ed Elements, we always start um, everything with a check-in and we'll get into uh, the rationale behind that in a little bit. Um, but our check-in question for today, just add to the chat um, or come off mute if you want to share that way. Um, what's your role? Where are you joining us from? And what is the best coaching relationship um, that you've had? And the best coaching relationship I had was uh, the first instructional coach I ever had, Mr. Gamash. Um, he just broke everything into little pieces. So it was very manageable and that was super helpful. And then when I became an instructional coach, I was really nervous and I was like, I just got to channel my inner Mr. Gamash. I just have to be like him, keep it bite-sized, keep it easy. Um, so when in doubt, channel your inner Mr. Gamash, but you can go ahead and add to the chat role, location, and best coaching relationship you've had. I love that. Keeping things bite-sized is so important. Um, we already shared a little bit of who we are and where we're calling in from, but the best coaching relationship I've ever had uh, was definitely uh, Mike. He is somebody who always asked really thought-provoking questions and got me thinking. And I appreciate the time to process and come to my own conclusion. I'm always reminded of that and find myself trying to do the same thing with my husband. Doesn't always work. Um, <laughs> Sometimes when I pull up this chat, a little black box pops up. I'm sorry for that technical issue. Um, but yeah, thank you for adding. Beginning teacher development support in Charlotte. Welcome. Hudson Valley. Um, I am from there originally. It's nice to meet you. So I'm seeing when people had the opportunity to practice what they learned um, and receive feedback on it right away seems really, really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, would love to hear some other, um, what made it the best coaching relationship um, that you've had in the chat or um, come off mute or if anyone in the chat would love to um, hear you share off mute too, give us some more context. If you're just joining us, uh, welcome. We're just getting started. Um, we're starting with a checking question and you can um, share in the chat or come off mute, whatever uh, you would like. Uh, we would love to hear your role, uh, where you're joining from today and what's the best coaching relationship that you've had. And that could be when you were being coached or when you were coaching someone else. Well, thank you to those that uh, checked in in the chat. It looks like we got one more uh, coming in. Lots of those really strong relationships. I think when we reflect back, those are the ones that we remember the most. Today, we're going to spend some time sparking thinking about what a coaching relationship can entail. We will hopefully expand some knowledge about planning to support those that you coach and then we'll give you a chance to hear about and practice seven ways that you can build powerful moments for those that you coach. And um, we'll ask you to choose one thing to apply as we close out. Couple of notes, we know it's summer uh, and in the middle of a busy work week, we're sure in a busy work day, we're gonna ask that you keep these four norms in mind. One is be willing to consider and try some new ideas. So especially in this spark, we're gonna give you some ways to think differently and think about what's safe enough to try. What are you willing to do? 
if you can, we've pushed Leslie to uh, to make this a webinar or excuse me, a Zoom meeting instead of a webinar so that we could see faces and we could use the chat. So if you feel comfortable having your video on and using the chat throughout, we would love to be able to really engage with you. And throughout, we're gonna give you a little bit of think time. We will uh, push ourselves to have some good tunes, some good vibes. We hope you try and uh, channel that energy as well. We want this to be a fun and interactive next 45 minutes or so. Uh, and ultimately lead with that bias toward action. Today, we'll ask you to close out by thinking about what are you gonna do differently to plan powerful moments for those that you coach. Um, so be, be thinking about that lens. At Ed Elements, we believe in this process for learning. We like to start with a quick spark, some inspiration about why we might do things differently. We'll spend a little bit of time expanding knowledge, going through a practice or a protocol to help build understanding. And then this webinar is all about those seven ways. So we're gonna give you seven different things that you might try out and ask you what you can apply. Obviously you need time to actually apply those things, but if you ever want to debrief or reflect on how it went, feel free to reach back out to us. We would love to keep the conversation going. So with that in mind, I'm gonna get started with this quote from Brian Chesky. He's the CEO of Airbnb. And he says, there's a difference between asking someone what would make something better versus what would make them tell everyone they know about it. When we think about the experiences that, that teachers have in the classroom and that the, they've had in schools over the last couple of years, we know that it's been challenging. There's a difference between asking teachers what would make teaching better or what would make your experience at school better and what would make you tell everyone you know about how much you love your job. As coaches, part of our goal is to grow those people that we support, but also to make sure that we retain them. And so we encourage you to think with this lens in mind, how can you make the experience that your teachers have with you so good that they wanna tell everyone they know about it. Now, if you've ever stayed in Airbnb, then you're familiar with the five-star rating system. A one-star basically means put these hosts in jail. Uh, we can never stay at this house again. A five-star, we recognize that perfection doesn't exist, but we were really happy here. We're gonna come back to these stars throughout our session, um, but think about this as we get into some of this framing. We wanna take a moment, uh, about two minutes, to listen to Brian talk about how Airbnb thinks about an experience for those that they support. I'll name, he says one small bad word in this, uh, so I apologize if that's offensive at all, um, but as you listen, be thinking about the connections between this and teaching. And so we basically took one part of our product and we extrapolated what would a five-star experience be and then we went crazy. So a one, two, or three-star experience is you get to your Airbnb and no one's there. So you knock on the door, they don't open, that's a one-star. You know, or maybe it's a three-star if they don't open, you have to wait 20 minutes. And if they never show up and you're pissed and you need to get your money back, that's a one-star, you're never using this again. So a five-star experience is you knock on the door, they open the door, they let you in. Great, that's not a big deal. You're not gonna tell every friend about it. You might say, I used Airbnb, it worked. So we thought, what would a six-star experience be? A six-star experience, you knock on the door, the host opens, hey, I'm Reed, welcome to my house. You're the host in this case. And you would show them around and on the table would be a welcome gift. It would be a bottle of wine, maybe some candy. You'd open the fridge, there's water. You go to the bathroom, there's toiletries, and the whole thing is great. That's a six-star experience. And you'd say, wow, I love this more than a hotel. I'm definitely gonna use Airbnb again. It worked better than I expected. What's a seven-star experience? Knock on the door, Reed Hoffman opened. Get in, welcome. Here's my full kitchen. I know you like surfing. There's a surfboard waiting for you. I booked lessons for you. It's going to be an amazing experience. And by the way, here's my car. You can use my car. And, um, you know, I also want to surprise you, but I got you this is the best restaurant in the city of uh, San Francisco. I got you a table there. And you're like, whoa, like this is way beyond. Adding stars clearly excites Brian. It took some time to run through this mental exercise. We'll skip ahead to the 10 star experience. So what a 10 star check-in be? A 10 star check-in would be the Beatles check-in in 1964. 
I'd get off the plane and there'd be 5,000 high school kids cheering my name with cars welcoming me to the country. I'd get to the front yard of your house and there'd be a press conference for me. And I would, so what would an 11 star experience be? I would show up to the airport and you'd be there with Elon Musk and you're saying you're going to space. The point of the process is that maybe 9, 10, 11 are not feasible, but if you go through the crazy exercise of keep going, there's some sweet spot between they showed up and they opened the door and I went to space, that's a sweet spot. And you have to almost design the extreme to come backwards. Suddenly, doesn't just like having like knowing my preferences and having a surfboard in the house seem like not crazy and reasonable. It's actually kind of crazy logistically. But this is the kind of stuff that creates great experience. But so today, we're going to use this as a frame in thinking about what that Beatles entrance would look like. Phoebe, you want to take us, uh, take us through this next couple of questions? Perfect. So we might uh, might not be able to have the Beatles welcoming everyone to school every day, but we can uh, definitely think big. So we want to think about what would this five star experience be like for educators and staff that we coach. And we'll think about this by breaking it up into four buckets. So we're going to think about with that one star experience all the way through five, what would the for the person you're um, designing this experience for, go ahead and put in the chat, what would a one-star experience, what would it, what would they be thinking about it? How would they feel? What would they be doing or saying? So think about creating that experience for the educators or staff that you coach. What would a one-star experience think, feel, um, be doing, or what would the person be doing or what would they be saying? Go ahead and put those in the chat. What would you be saying, this, Courtney? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, when a coach catches you on what is clearly an off day, like you're feeling sick, you're running late, the copy machine jammed or was out of paper, and that's the lesson they came to see. And then they want to give you critical feedback on that when you know it's like not, not the lesson for you anyways. Um, it always makes me feel invisible or like um, someone isn't really looking to, to coach me, just looking to share what they've done. What about you, Phoebe? I would think it's those, any day that you get one of those, can you meet me in my office after school? And you're just like, they saw something, you know, something happened. You're like, have no idea what you're walking into. You're really nervous um, all day. Definitely would be a one star, maybe negative, negative one star uh, experience. <laughs> Our chat's pretty quiet today, um, but you all have access to come off mute if you'd like. Would anybody like to share out what's a what's a one star coaching experience? Hopefully, you haven't been there. Thanks. I see uh, some answers uh, flowing in in the chat. Yeah, someone telling you what should be done and not trying to listen to you or connect or see what's going to work um, work for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, acting, acting dismissive. I think that's like the worst feeling ever when you feel um, like no one's listening to you and no one's paying attention to you. And what Courtney said, you you really feel invisible. Yeah, not not related to your needs off topic, not what you really need to work on. Ooh, Trudy, what did you do? What did you do with that script? And do you mind if I come off mute? Not <laughs> at all. <laughs> okay, great. Um, actually, it was one of those where I just kind of went, lady, no. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I I just honestly, I I'm one of those educators that I look out for what I'm gonna do with my students first. And there's no way I was gonna stand in front of them with reading a script. Yeah. Um, and so I offered her a seat in my room. So she could join the lesson. I offered, you know, I included her with what I did and we talked about her script. I did include some of the conversation from the script. I just didn't follow the teacher says, students say script. Um, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Thanks for sharing, Trudy. You're welcome. <laughs> And highlighting, I feel like this goes into what uh, John said in the chat, like no personal connection with the coach. Like you feel like you don't know them as a person and we're not 
you know, as people uh, prone to taking feedback from people that we A, don't like, or B, don't know. Mm -hmm. So moving into thinking, what would that like three-star experience be like? Like you're not running, you know, to tell everyone you know about the experience. It was just like, okay, maybe you kind of forgot about it. Um, as the next day. We'd love to hear what some of those um, experiences have been like, um, either being coached um, or as a coach, maybe a day when you miss the mark. Any, uh, th what would three star for you, Courtney? Anything coming to mind? Yeah, I think as a coach, sometimes where I felt like a three star was when I knew my team was burnt out and the ways that I could help them all felt kind of limiting, right? Like I know grades are due. I know your lesson plans or unit plans aren't done. I know that you have so much on your plate and the suggestions I have to make your life easier are, are only making minimal changes. Um, that relationship might be there, but I know that there's like an unseen uh, need that's not being addressed. What about for you all? Ian, if you're able to, would love to hear you uh, come off you if, if you're able to and want to and uh, describe that experience. Sure, thank you, Phoebe. Um, we spent quite a bit of time in our district several years ago when some new state standards were rolled out for teaching, um, prioritizing them and then working with small teacher groups to unpack and really define what it looks like, not from a standardized approach, but more from a personalized approach of, if I'm a social studies high school teacher, what might that look like in my classroom? If I'm a kindergarten teacher in a Montessori environment, what might that look like? And it just really, I think, developed um, a deeper understanding of professional practice. Thanks for sharing, Anne. And moving on to what would that five star experience look like? Five out of five. Would love to hear what are some, um, we shared before what a relationship uh, meant the most. What were some of those five star experiences? For me, back to back to Mr. Gamash, who I'll keep talking about. I'll have to send this to him. Um, towards the end of the year, we looked back on like all of the action steps I had like accomplished through the year. And I just felt really, really accomplished um, as a teacher. And it was felt so good that like he felt good about me and just looking back at that progress. So I'll really remember that my first year teaching when you're like, feel like you've climbed to the top of Mount Everest and back a hundred thousand times. <laughs> seeing things that could be quick and easy. Yep. Seeing that like immediate reward, follow-up. Yep. Accomplishments being celebrated. Yeah. I love that. And I love when people say, you know, we're, we leave and we're going to try this thing. And then the coach comes back and says, Hey, how did it go? And they're just as invested in your success and your student success as you are. And I think the the through line I'm really seeing through uh, these responses coming through in the chat is that relationship. It's somebody that you know, it's someone where it's ongoing and you're both like learning and growing together. So now we've talked about five. I'll pass it back to Courtney to, to see where we're going to go from here. So thinking about this, sometimes we have to, just like um, Brian said with Airbnb, they think about what are what happens if we keep adding stars? What happens if we go to the extreme? And then from there, we can come back and kind of find the sweet spot. We want you to think about really expanding some knowledge and what that sense of possibility. We shared as a group kind of one, two, and three star experiences here. We're gonna give you a minute and ask you to think, uh, we'll play some music. What would that 10 star coaching experience be like? Don't think about the limitations of your staff at the school building and time, but really uh, take just, just a couple of moments. We'll take about 90 seconds. Um, we're gonna ask you to share these out afterwards, but really what would be the version of checking in at Airbnb like the Beatles? What would be the most amazing coaching experience somebody could have? take some time and think about that extreme.
All right, we're seeing some things come through in the chat. A coaching session held in Jamaica. Um, yeah, I was thinking about what if a coach could, you know, transport me to go see the kind of thing I was trying to do in action in another classroom uh, right then and there. Um, anybody else want to share kind of what is that 10 star experience, whether you want to share in the chat or come off mute up to you. Carolyn, I and I apologize if I'm saying that incorrectly. I love what you put here. Somebody to follow you around all day, ask any questions, model anytime you want. That's a great, uh, great example. Other thoughts? Hmm. I'm thinking about if I could like, uh, they were, someone was observing or observing someone else and you could like pause time, discuss something, rewind, try it again, and then move forward. I know that's not possible, but in my dream world. <laughs> We've got a couple of ideas here about what dream worlds entail. Um, and so we want you to build off of some of this. Here's an example that comes from a different district we worked with. We asked them to think about what's that opening day like for teachers when they start the school year. The most extreme idea, we've got Beyonce there, she's performing live, right? Um, but maybe a sweet spot idea is when teachers come in, there's music playing, there are ways for the crowd to move and dance together at different times. It's not just a soundtrack in the background, but it's something that we're like really intentional about throughout the day trying to create the energy of a live performance. If your sweet spot idea is, uh, or if my extreme idea, excuse me, for coaching is a coach who can transport me to see in action the type of learning or type of instruction I'm trying to facilitate, then a sweet spot might be hooking me up with somebody virtually and letting me observe their classroom. And suddenly that virtual idea, which would be beyond what I would expect in my five-star experience, seems pretty doable. What are some of those other sweet spot ideas that you have for taking your extreme ideas and making them a reality? Phoebe, anything coming to mind for you? I would say maybe being able to collaborate um, or be coached alongside or uh, be able to observe like people in other schools in my district. Maybe not something that's coming to mind initially, but something that might be helpful. See a little bit in the chat here, having some thought provoking questions. Really thinking about that timely feedback, making sure you're getting it in a timely manner. We'll continue to ask you to think about this. I think it takes some time to go through this thought exercise. Um, but you know, one thing that comes up for me too is, is recognizing an extreme idea for somebody I coach is making sure that they have time every single week to get everything they need to get done. Um, and time is such a, a commodity in education. A sweet spot idea might be that when they're administering a test and they're not teaching, I cover that class as a coach or I find someone who can cover that class and give them an extra period back so they can spend more time planning or spend more time thinking about how they adjust their lessons. We'll move into sharing some ideas for ways that you can create these kind of sweet spots for your teachers and your team. Um, and so let's get into practice and a couple of things that you can do. Our first suggestion here is to spend more time thinking about that five-star experience. You can use the slides, maybe drop them in the chat and we'll email them out afterwards or send us an email. We'd love to facilitate this conversation with your team, but bring together your school leaders and your teachers and take this activity we just did and use it with your leadership team to talk about how do we create more intentionality around the experience that our teachers have with coaches. Ask your teachers, specifically your veteran teachers, to share their ideas. What would a five-star experience look like for them? And then think about what can you implement? What are some of those sweet spot ideas that you can really use?
Number two, which we uh, kicked off things with um, this afternoon is a check-in question. So check-in questions allow you to get a pulse for what is the emotional status of the group in, in the room? What weight are people coming into the meeting with? What is on people's minds? How has their day been? Um, and slowly build those connections um, over time with a group. And then when you're picking um, a check-in question to do at the beginning of a meeting, thinking about who is in the room. Is it a new group of people? Is it an existing group of people that's now welcoming new people in? Um, and starting with those more general questions and then getting deeper as the group builds that psychological safety. I don't know about y'all, but if I walked into a meeting with totally new people and someone was asking me, like, what do you wish you were better at? I might feel really vulnerable sharing. I might be really nervous and not set a great tone, but starting off with something like, what was your first car? I could talk to you about uh, the minivan that I drove in high school. Um, you know, give you a little little story about that. That doesn't make me doesn't make me nervous. So we have some um, one some examples here for getting an emotional uh, pulse on the room, and then some um, like I talked about before, layering those questions to getting to um, a deeper meaning. I'm going to put in the chat. We have um, a toolbox to share with some check in and check out questions. So we talked about um, using these at the beginning of a meeting but could also um, be used as a checkout question at the end. And that could be something simple, um, like a fist to five. Five being, I feel like I got all my questions answered. One, I'm still feeling really uncertain. Would love to um, hear in the chat or feel free to come off mute. Any uh, great checking questions um, that you have used, um, either that you came up with or you can take credit for them if someone else came up with them. What's your go-to checking question, Courtney? Ooh, my go to. Um, I like to ask folks, you know, you know, if their day was a song, what song would it be? Or what what's a song that uh, always brings them joy, especially if there's a way that I can like then then play it or bring it back to a team playlist. Um, but you know, I what I like about what you've shared here, Phoebe, is just how quick this is. So many people said in our check in that having a strong relationship with their coach mattered. And, you know, this is something you can do in 30 seconds or a couple of minutes and slowly start to build that connection, uh, which I think is really impactful. All right, what's coming through in the chat? Some favorite check-in questions. I know y'all have some good check-in questions out there or little uh, might call them ref uh, referred to as icebreaker questions. Mm -hmm. And a low lift one I liked recently was, uh, what was the worst haircut you ever got? People oh. had funny stories about the worst haircut that they ever had. Yeah, definitely some really bad bangs um, over here. Oh, I love this. Tori Ann, and let me know if I'm saying your um, name incorrectly. The, it's Ross from Friends, a bunch of pictures. I don't know, Courtney, if you're able to pull it up. Um, and what Ross uh, are you today? This seems like a perfect one for maybe a new group that's coming together or a group that's maybe having a rough week and just needs a little laugh. This is so funny. Thank you for sharing that. Now we've talked a little, oh, Courtney, can you go back one? Yep. Um, and just uh, getting in a little more about why we use checking questions, just a great, uh, opportunity to get to know everyone a little bit more. I love that at the beginning of the meeting, you're getting everyone's voice right off the bat. It's not, you're making sure that no one is going through the whole meeting with no chance to share or no one that has ever um, talked. Just allows you to get to know the people that you work with as people. What do they do outside of work? What are their passions? What are their hobbies? What do they think is funny? What do they like to read um, or watch? Um, and yep, yeah, getting everyone uh, back from the start. We did it. Oh, I'm seeing some more coming in from the chat. Lots of these. I love those. Which person are you? Um, we have that. I've done that one too, like Abbott Elementary cast. Which which person are you? But then a lot of screenshots. There's a lot of good facial expressions uh, in that show. And thanks, Sherry. Oh, I love that checking uh, generator that Sherry shared in the chat too. It just will give you endless amounts of checking questions if you're um, having trouble coming up with one. Yeah. Such a good way, Phoebe, to move away from what we kind of shared as like a one-star coaching experience. Like when you're having an off day and the coach doesn't even recognize that, 
Um, I, I think back to some of those moments and how different it would be if someone just paused first to say like, how are you today? Okay, we talked about using a five star experience using a check in question. Let's talk about how you might spend your time and do a daily greeting as a way to slowly build powerful moments for those that you coach. So uh, this is a quick pop in every single day, even if it's just for a minute to start to get a true pulse of how things are going. Um, before we get into this tip, we'd love if you could add to the chat. How many people do you coach? Or if you lead a team, your district leader, your school principal, on average, how many people do your coaches coach? Phoebe, when you were a coach, what was your typical uh, like coach caseload, if you will? How many, how many teammates did you have on there? Um, I was a, a teacher and then I also coached five other teachers the ELA, middle school ELA squad. I've got that high school background. So, um, and, and here in Texas, some of those high schools could be quite large. So my typical like department size is right around 30, 30 people that I would coach. And district coach, yeah. 14 on a daily basis, okay. Twenty per year, eight to ten is on a time focus. I love that uh, differentiation. Thank you. Well, we all know that our memories as humans are not fair. We remember the beginnings of our day, we remember the end of the day, and then anything very memorable. But in general, a lot of our day to day, a lot of our years, they they start to blend together. And so when you think about how you might build powerful moments, you want to prioritize the bookends of people's days. One thing that I love that my team used to do is always ending the day with a quick hall huddle. Um, and I can't take credit for it. The teachers I coached decided to do it themselves, um, but they just spend five minutes at the end of every day before they walked out the door, huddling together and saying what was the best part of their day or what was something memorable. On occasion, you know, those, those, they had moments where they said today was really tough but they always ended it together and they always made sure that the team got checked in on before they left. When you think about those people that you coach, can you encourage them to have some kind of ritual to close out their day with so that they always have this thing that over time becomes a really powerful moment. You might also think about how you as a coach can do a quick morning check-in. Um, a mentor of mine used to say to me, make sure you see all of your teachers in the morning before the, before the first 30 minutes of the day go through. So I would spend time, I had 30 people I coached to spend about a minute in each room. And all I'm doing is looking very briefly to see how they are. At the beginning of the year, it's a moment to just say, hey, how are you? Do you need anything? And when they have that kind of day where the copier hasn't worked or they're missing a material or something's going on, they know they can pull me aside and I can step in for them. Asking really briefly, do you need anything? Giving people the chance to say like, yeah, actually I'm, I'm concerned about how this lesson is gonna go. And then as a coach, you might think about just checking in for one thing. Is there something specific you've been talking about in professional development or in your PLC? Maybe that means at the beginning of the year, you're looking to see, do they have a lesson objective posted? Is it aligned to our standard? Or if you've really been focusing on questioning, do they have a driving question up? When I pop into their room briefly, do I see that the desks are set up for collaboration? This daily greeting becomes a way to build a relationship with your team and show them that you're always there for them. If you can prioritize just spending 30 minutes a day, uh, really making sure you see everybody briefly, but it also is a way for you to get a lot of data that you can then use to inform how you coach people moving forward. So if you see that a teacher is always coming into the day a little bit unprepared, you can have that conversation. Or if you see that every time you pop into their room, desks are in rows and there doesn't seem to be evidence of collaboration, you can address those things. Moving on to number four, we're going to talk about um, journey maps and planning powerful moments for when we expect the lows. I think, um, you know, we all know how the cycle of the school year goes. There are times that are really fun and exciting, um, like maybe that right before winter break is fun and exciting. The end of the year when there's lots of fun activities, the first day of school are those really 
um, high highs, but then there's times that we can anticipate ahead of time that are going to be lows. Maybe the month of October, that month is very, very long. If you know that it's going to be a low planning to add those powerful moments and really flip the script and make those times like the month of October, right before grades are due, um, those type of times right before state testing. And how can they flip those times to be really, uh, really awesome? And Courtney's got some other uh, great ideas for how to make those moments powerful. Yeah. So like you mentioned, Phoebe, October is tough, especially if you start school in August. Um, one thing that we've always, that we did when I was a principal was we took a calendar and we said, what's one thing that we could do uh, to make a nice moment for our teachers every single day? So one day we might have baked goods, one day we might have a thank you note, um, and just we're really intentional as a plan, a small thing every single day, which gives people that uh, really recognition that you see them working and that you've been thinking about what they might need. It's helpful if you can think through what is it about this moment right now that is making things hard for folks. So state testing becomes stressful because we teachers are worried about how their students will do. Did I do enough to prepare them? That's a great time to intentionally plan students giving some thank you notes to teachers and to build out an opportunity for students to say, hey, Miss so-and-so, Mr. so-and-so, here are all the ways that you supported me this year. And let that teacher know, even though there's the stress of state exams coming up, um, I know that the work that I've done in my classroom has mattered. When you're thinking about inputting grades and how time consuming that can be, is there a way that you can give people some time back or right after parent conferences or a late night so that they have a moment? Um, one of the most fun I've ever had with somebody we coached was we gave them a surprise field day where students got a chance to just spend an extra hour outside and teachers got that time to catch up on things that had fallen off of their plate. While that wasn't a, a coaching conversation about things we saw in the classroom, it was time to really be intentional about what they needed in that moment and how we could support them as coaches. What are some of the things that you do to bring powerful moments and joy when you, uh, when you expect lows for your team? You can add to the chat, you can come off mute. Coffee is a great gift, Phoebe. I had a previous supervisor and she called them something like that, a warm and fuzzy, like you'd leave mm -hmm. on someone's desk, like a cup of coffee or just something, something small um, or something that costs almost nothing, just like writing a, a nice thank you note. Moving into um, shared learning, as people uh, shared in the chat, the least, those one-star negative 10-star experiences were when someone just told you what to do and they didn't help you along the way or and you didn't feel like you were listened to. So we know that those most powerful moments for those you coach are really going to come um, from shared deep learning. And a lot of that is gonna come from being really effective um, with questioning to help people come to their own, own understanding and really feel like they're being heard and they're being seen. And also thinking about how this learning could happen um, amongst the group of teachers that you might support um, can help make that learning really sticky and effective. And we know if people are working on something together, working towards a common goal, that can be really effective um, for creating change. And going back one minute to our other, seeing some uh, other notes in the chat, a coffee bar uh, is really fun. I would love that, especially I, I love planning a surprise. I like getting a surprise too, but love planning them. Any type of food, yep, is a great idea. Inspirational, uh, yeah, a quote or, or a poster, I love that. On a business card, I've never heard that idea before. I love that, I'm sprinkling them around school. Okay, so these next ideas are around um, 
being intentional about what sometimes goes wrong with our coaching experiences. We talked about what could be the sweet spot, what could be the extreme, how can you think about a five-star experience for those you coach. But you might also ask teammates to really tap into their experience and intuition with coaches and do a retrospective or a pre-mortem. And a pre-mortem is really saying like, what would cause our coaching relationship to end in disaster? At the beginning of the school year, maybe before you get started, take some time and meet with those that you coach and say, what could go wrong? How would this end in disaster? And how might we mitigate that? And you'll find uh, some really interesting responses from people potentially around, you know, if you try and coach me at the end of the school day, I have other commitments then, I have family obligations, it's not gonna be a good time for me. So I need us to build the time in throughout the day or um, any kind of thing that, that people really respond well to or don't respond well to. This helps you get to know your team and it opens up the space for them to say what they think might go wrong without it having already gone wrong. Um, and so it allows them to address any kind of, of the ways that they have experienced negative coaching in the past so that you can make sure not to repeat those same things. Another way to think about this or another way to use this uh, is to follow the idea of, and it sounds kind of gross, elephants, dead fish, and vomit. Uh, especially if you're coaching someplace that maybe you've worked for a while, you might ask the team to come together and say, first read the blog post. Um, what are all the elephants, dead fish, and vomit we need to talk about? Elephants are those unspoken issues, big things in the room. Maybe multiple people applied for this coaching position and you got it. And so now you have to coach someone who wanted that role. You've got to address that elephant before you're going to move on and have a healthy relationship. Dead fish are things that are stinking up the place. They are rotten, they are negative experiences, and they need to just be removed from the table. So maybe somebody really struggled with classroom management in the past and they're having a hard time moving past that. You wanna name it, address it, and then take it out. And imagine actually like throwing it into the garbage or throwing that post-it note into the garbage so that people know we're leaving that in the past. And then your vomit, those are just the things that need to be vented. Every once in a while, the folks that we coach need a chance to say, here are the things that are a struggle right now. I've got multiple preps. I'm struggling as a new teacher, whatever the thing is, let me get it off my chest so that we can move forward in a psychologically safe way. Phoebe linked the blog here. In the interest of time, we won't necessarily read through it right now, um, but this is one thing you might use with your team, especially if it's a team that hasn't had productive coaching conversations in the past. All right, the last thing we're gonna ask you to do is to think about your time. So if you could really quickly, just draw a circle on a scrap paper, or if you don't have anything handy, um, you know, feel free to do this in your head. And what we want you to do is think about what are you spending your time doing at work during, during a typical work week? Um, how might you break up that time? So maybe 50% is op uh, observations, maybe you're in meetings about 25% of the time. Take a little bit of time and think about what your pie chart entails. All right, we're gonna ask you to add to the chat. What percentage of your pie chart would you say you spend on your own professional learning or growth? Feel free to add it to the chat. How much time in a typical work week do you get to spend on your own professional learning or growth? That sounds about right, John. 10% if I'm lucky, 10% barely. Ooh, lots, lots of commonalities here. Most of us are saying about 10%. And I'd love to know if people wanna to add to the chat or come off mute, what does that professional development look like? When does your team make the time to learn and grow? 
you know, what is that like 10% if I'm lucky? Does that mean like you're doing it on your own outside of work hours? What does that entail? I assume people are just taking a minute to type or to think. Uh, Phoebe, what did what did professional development look like for you when you were coaching others? I definitely tried to prioritize time to uh, sit in on other people's um, coaching meetings and see how they they ran into things. Um, that was a little easier said than done in terms of timing wise, but was definitely helpful when it um, was able to happen. Yeah. It looks like people, thank you for uh, recognizing this, like free webinars like this one, things that you can do while doing other things are, are things to wind up doing, but definitely something people do on their own. I like the Sherry's just starting out every morning with a quick read or something to help you grow. Sometimes it's a blog, sometimes it might be a chapter of a book, um, but really good point that like starting your morning with that is an important thing to do. Well, one thing we want to share as something your school or district might consider, even just you individually, is thinking about how you can make that time. Um, we love a webinar, but carving out an hour of the day is, is hard to do sometimes. And so uh, really one thing we've been thinking about is how can learning happen in chunks of 10 minutes or less um, at, at Elements, we have created these virtual courses to help people really think about what is their coaching relationship, whether it's who you are and the relationship building piece or thinking about what engagement and feedback looks like with the hey, coach. Hi, Olivares. Yes, um, and so what you're seeing on the screen is just a screenshot of what that looks like. Oh, sorry, uh -huh. I didn't mean to unmute you. Uh, but what you'll see there is that everything takes just a couple of minutes and gives people a chance to go through learning at their own pace uh, with just a, a short snippet throughout the day. Um, and so if you are somebody who leads other coaches, we think this could be a great resource for helping people just build in 10 minutes a day of learning that is structured and aligned to what they need to do as a coach. With that in mind, we're coming up at the end of our time here today. We'd love to know we shared a few different ideas. What's something that you want to try coming out of today's session? It's one idea that you're taking away. Nice. Adding these check-in questions. I'm glad elephants, dead fish, and walnut resonated, Trudy. Uh, it's a good way to clear, clean the, clear, clear the air. Journey mapping. Oh, Torian, this is awesome. You're gonna have to share it back with us. Creating a, a rubric for, am I acting as a five-star coach? We'd love to see what that looks like once you create it. Phoebe, what from the chat is is resonating with you? I think what's resonating with me is how easy um, and effective checking questions are. Like they can take a super quick amount of time um, and just something easy to add at the beginning that I think really makes a big, big difference. Yeah, that's great. Well, today we spent a little bit of time talking through these seven different ways. Again, if you're interested in uh, having that professional learning continuing on, we encourage you check out this link. Uh, we will include it in the chat, but just one way to help your team continue to build their toolkit or for you personally to build yours with just 10 minutes a day. Um, we really are into on-demand learning courses that people can do at their own pace because we know how powerful it is to continue learning once we get into the school year and, and the busyness takes over.
we hope that we sparked some thinking. Uh, we love that Airbnb activity and, and gave you some additional knowledge about how you might intentionally plan. We went through seven different ways that you could coach uh, or add in those powerful moments to those that you coach. And we asked you to choose one thing to apply. At any time, if you have follow-up questions, if you'd like to receive additional resources, or you wanna talk about how you're applying these things, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, I'm Courtney Flanders. Courtney, not like a Kardashian at, at elements.com. Um, and Phoebe, people can reach out to you whenever as well, yeah? Anytime. And I put those uh, link to the learning courses um, in the chat as well as our emails. Thanks so much for making the time to be here with us today. We appreciate you. Feel free to stay on if you need anything. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Stay cool, everybody. Bye. Thank you, everybody.